Now let's take a deeper look at the Acquire tab here within the LASX software. Notice that it's broken into three distinct panels. The far left panel, the center panel, and this right image display panel all allow you access to different things very easily within our software. Starting with our Projects tab here, this is where you can navigate through acquired projects or open new projects. A project is simply a collection of images or experiments. You can even select an experiment and apply the settings from that experiment to the microscope as a way of quickly reproducing experiment parameters. Also here on the bottom, we've got a settings for new projects tab within which you can actually activate an auto save feature. I like this because I like to have things automatically saved. If you hit this plus sign, you can also get access to the folder tree wherein all that autosave data is going to be saved for you. On the bottom, you can also activate a user-defined image name. So rather than having the default image name 001, you can actually put a sample-specific name to help you keep your data nice and organized. This top right button will activate a gallery view, which is a nice quick way of jumping into exactly what image you wanted. Instead of having to click on each one, you can see them all displayed here together. Now let's continue into our acquisition tab. The first thing we'll see is the acquisition mode, where we can control which dimensions will be included in our experiment. Here, all the ones that are selected will be highlighted in red. When you add an additional dimension, the new dialog appears in the list below, and you can address that dialog to assure that it's capturing the range within the dimension that you'd like. Beneath that, we have our imaging control window, where our camera's exposure time, gain, and settings can all be accessed. These can be either identical across multiple channels or customized for each of the channels that you've set up. Beneath that, we also have our illumination settings. On this system, we've got some automated excitation control, so I can control the amount of light that's hitting my sample. We also have our magnification control. Since there's a motorized nose piece on this microscope, I can click and change between different objectives. Some systems aren't motorized, but are encoded, in which case you'll be able to easily see your objective being displayed here, but you'll have to reach over to the scope and manually change them. We also have access to environmental controls, project settings, a calibration wizard, memory functions, and the ability to do a live stream recording directly here within the acquisition tab. Now let's have a look at the center panel here on the acquire tab. We've got the ability to quickly load and save settings right here. So if your experimentation is very consistent, I strongly recommend saving your settings and then just sitting down to the microscope and loading them each day. You'll be imaging in no time. Beneath that, we have these different channels. I've loaded mine, so these are configured for individual fluorescent cubes with customized exposure times. And once you've got them set up, this is where you'd easily navigate between the different channels. Notice below that that we saw a change as I click on the different channel. The microscope cube is changed and indicated in red. This is our graphic demonstration of the photon path through the system, starting with the lamp working through the cube and the objective, hitting the specimen and coming back up through to our detector. As that photon moves through, it'll go through whichever cube is selected in red or whatever modality you have selected from the drop-down menu of the channels. For example, different transmitted light options exist here on this system because of the hardware I have. In the bottom left, we've got different indicators for our adaptive focus control or sequencer, notifying us that it's not set up or it's operating well with a green indicator. Now let's have a look at this image display window here on the right side. Similar to the projects tab, this image display window will show up in several other places in our software, including the process and quantify tabs, and in a different form in our analysis tab. This top left options here allow you to control how your data is being displayed within our software. 
This will allow you to enhance the contrast or alter the lookup table that's being applied to the image to allow you to better visualize what you're trying to see. None of this will change permanently your raw data. This is simply for the display within our software. Across the top, we have different annotations available. We can do scale bars, and if you click on this annotation, there's other options like a counter, an arrow, lines, as well as text, which you can use to annotate your image directly here within the Acquire tab if you like. We also have easy navigation buttons here, zooming in, zooming out, fitting it best for the display size, all available with the click of a button. Around the image, we'll have different elements to control the dimensional information. In this case, I've got a Z stack loaded. So we have our Z stack or our Z information controls here on the right side. If we had a time lapse or multiple stage positions, those would be available here on the bottom. On the right side, we can hit this plus sign to add an additional image viewer, which is a nice feature if you wanted to compare two images that you have on this machine. Moving down, we can either have a single image with an overlay as displayed here, or multiple images on their own individual panes here. So this is one image broken out with each individual channel displayed individually. You can control which images are on, or which channels are on through these choices here on the right. This also allows us to do a maximum projection, which will take the brightest intensity values for each pixel through the Z stack and compress it into a two-dimensional image of the brightest pixels. And here at the bottom, we also have our multi-dimensional gallery, which is really nice if you've got large time lapses or big Z stacks where you can go through and pull subsets of that entire experiment out for analysis or demonstration. And now let's have a look at the buttons across the bottom of our Acquire tab. We've got a live button, which will begin the live feed from the camera and display it here in our image display panel on the right. Across the bottom of the center panel, we have three different acquisition choices. We have a single image capture, which will take a single channel that you have selected only. So it will ignore the additional channels as well as the additional dimensions that you have selected as part of your experiment. Capture image will capture all of the channels, but again, it will ignore the additional dimension information you've got laid out in your experiment parameters. And also the start button, which will actually begin all channels, all dimensions for your experiment. On the right side as well, we have an image displayed in microns here. We can change that to pixels as if we prefer. And if you hover over any position, the cursor position will show up, giving you that X, Y location in either microns or pixels if you prefer.